I say, my brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do it corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. And in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be chained. For this corruption must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Give her of the fruit of her hands, <laughs> and let her own works praise her in the gates. <laughs> Come ye blessed of my Father, 
inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And Jesus took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. And all wept and bewildered. But Jesus said, Weep not, she is not dead. She is but sleepeth. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Glory to his name. You may be seated. We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Sister Adela D. Walker. And we will follow the program as it is printed. And I do believe that it's in order that we would pray right now. Amen. Oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. And we ask, Lord, if you would have mercy upon this family. We ask, Lord, that you would touch them with your finger of love. Lord, we now come to celebrate the life of our loved one. And we ask, Lord, that you would touch each individual that's here right now. Touch every family member, every friend, and those who are here to show support. We ask that you would touch them right now. Lift up their bowed down heads and ease their troubling hearts. For we know that you are God who can and will and hear our prayers. We need you now, Lord. We, we need your mercy and your grace. We need your ever-loving care. Lord, we thank you for this life. We thank you for all the accomplishments. We ask now, Lord, that you would just touch us as we go through this time of bereavement. Our loved one is now in the land of no more. No more pain, no more suffering, no more sickness, no more bills, no more dealing with the troubles of this old world. So, Lord, we thank you now because she's in a better place over there in Zion. And so, Lord, we glorify you today. We lift you up in the name of Jesus. Thank you in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
script, the program called for scripture reading. Uh, Sister Carmela, Carmelita, if you're here, come on and read scripture. And then after which we'll have a song. And then we'll, we'll go over the obituary and we'll go from there. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. This is very hard for me to do, so deal with you, pray with me. Um, I'm reading the scripture from Psalms 100. Um, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Yeah. For the Lord is good yeah. and his mercies is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. I read to you Psalms 100. Uh, I want to say a few words about Dee when I met her. I met her at Mount Olive Baptist Church. It was, I think I was like 10, 11 years old. And um, she took right to me. I know I did. I caught myself doing her. And she, and she told me she had kids or whatever. And I just took to her. And I wanted to learn how to do hair. A lot of the other girls did too in church. But I just took to her. And I felt like I had a better chance because she did hair and I did too. So when she seen my hair, I said, look, D, I did my own hair, ooh. She said, oh, it's so cute. So when I met her daughter, Deborah, you know, Deborah tells the truth on everything. She don't spare your feelings or nothing. <laughs> oh, oh, you the one mama said her so nappy, and thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I never forget that, because I always think about how, how I told, then I wind up, and she hurt my little feelings, I cried, I told D. And D got on Deborah so bad, so I know who I can run. D Deborah started treating me different. But Darren, he stayed the same. Darren accepted me a little, but he did eventually. And David was sweet and nice. He accepted me too. He probably talked to me about Deborah all the time. But whenever they did, I could go to D and they would get in trouble. Big trouble. <laughs> so, but I really thank God for D in my life because I was just a little flower in church and she bloomed me to the woman that I am to am today. She taught me a lot of things. Um, she was just there for me in a way that, I mean, that I didn't have. I could talk to her about anything. I even had my own room at her house. And uh, Deborah hated that. She was jealous about it. She was always jealous of our relationship. So, you know, she's, you know, she couldn't understand, but you know, you see Deborah, her mouth, so. <laughs> so D was, I just thank God because at her ending, Deborah and Darren and De Deborah, we talked on the phone and I was just pleading them to let her come stay with me. It was, it was such an honor for her to stay with me. She would thank me every day and we would just cry. And I'm like, I'm thanking you for being here because it, it felt like I got her in her beginning and I got her at the end. And she would always say how much she loved her kids and talk about Deborah and Darren and really David. She really missed David. And she used to say that um, they're going to be okay. They're going to be good. She knows she raised them. She said, she ain't gonna, they ain't going to let nobody run over them. I said, oh, D, you ain't got to worry about that. They ain't going to let nobody run over them. So I just want y'all to know that I love you guys. Your mother loved y'all so much. And I don't want y'all to feel like that. Y'all was neglected or any of that. I don't want y'all to feel a certain kind of way because she loved you all. And I thank Joyce, too. I met Joyce in the process of growing up with her sister and Ricky. Um, you know, I kept her kids, and I think I was a teenager, and her daughter locked me out the house. So I really thought I was a good babysitter, and then she locked me out. I had to call them to come. Somebody to let me in. <laughs> So, you know, I just went through, <laughs> but it didn't um, make me stronger. And uh, this is making me strong too, because I have some things in my life I need to do, but I won't do it because it's, allowed, it's holding me back because I don't like speaking in front of people. But I thank God for Dee because I, she wouldn't believe it, but I thank God. 
And I have these two Bibles that she used to sit in her room and read, and they are so seasoned. I mean, they are really, I mean, they're good. It's God's word anyway, but I know D would love for me to get this one to Darren and one to David. And I want y'all, when y'all feel weak, David and Darren, it's marks in here. It's marks in here. I promise you that she have marked. And when you feel weak, pick it up. You will feel her. I feel her anointing all the time. So I know you all will. So thank you. Praise the Lord. We have a song now. Only get one. 
Amen. I'll always love my mama. Amen. 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 I, I can relate. Uh, I lost my mama two years ago. And I can relate to how you're feeling. Amen. Uh, right now, we're going to have Brother Abraham Gray come and read the obituary. Okay. Well, come on, let's do that now. Amen. After that, we'll have Brother Ricky Walker to come up, and we'll come back after that. You ready? Morning. Morning. Odelia L. Walker, D., as she was affectionately called, was the third of nine children born to the late Quincy and Jesse Bell Walker on May 9th, 1947. She departed this life Saturday, September 12th, 2020, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Odelia pursued her passion to become a hairdresser by owning and operating her own beauty salon for over 10 plus years. Odelia, <coughs> Odelia was known for her, excuse me, her sense of style, elegance, and grace, so much <clears throat> so much so that when she entered a room, it immediately lit up. Class at its finest. Her undeniable talent was so diverse that I often called her the jack of all trades and the master of them all. She will be sadly missed by all who have ever encountered her humbling spirit. This God-fearing woman leaves to celebrate her passing, her children, my Aunt Deborah R. Gray of Atlanta, Georgia, my Uncle Darren Gray of the world, and my father, David Gray of Colleen, Texas. I'm now going to read a, a, a poem for my grandmother. Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away to the next room. I am I, and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in an easy way, which you always used. Put no difference into your tone, where no force or of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laugh at little jokes we enjoy together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever, let my name be ever the household, word that is all that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a showdown on it. Life means, life means all that it ever meant. It is the shame that that it ever was. There is an absolute unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of my mind? Because I am out of sight. Sight. I am but waiting for you, for an in, for an inter, interval somewhere, very near, just around the corner. All is well. I love you, Odelia, Mama D. Hello, my people. Hello. Deborah, Darren, David, family, and friends. 
Odelia's all right. She's all right. She's good. Because she was on the right side. I didn't know of any enemies that she had. And if you had the opportunity to spend just one hour with Odelia D, you knew she loved the Lord, Jesus. I believe the majority of us here can agree with that. Yes. D was a mother, a grandmother, great, great grandmother, a sister, a friend, and everybody could study the Bible with. Now I would like for us to visualize that big, big book. Now, you all right? Mm -hmm. You good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. I want us to go to the, in that big book, go to the O's. Do you see it? You see her name? I do. <laughs> I see it. Odelia Lucille Walker. <laughs> That's nothing but good. Thank you. Family and friends, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to all of you for participating in her home going. Odelia, my sister, I will miss you in ways that I cannot express. And I pray that other loved ones' name are in that big book too. Right. <laughs> Odelia, I know you are resting in peace. So, we're gonna keep this family together. And I'm gonna lead, if, I, if you ask me, and if you let me, we will lead and continue together. I am here for you, each and every one of you. We will survive. Because we are on the right side. There is only one side, the right side. Anything else is academic. So we have no reason, reason to cry right now. We cry for the ones that are not on the right side. So dry those eyes. Let's move forward. She's in a good place. Now, my good friend here, he was late. <laughs> but she taught him how to be late. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> that was all by design. <laughs> <laughs> God shine on us. <laughs> you will be all right, my brother. I'm here for you. <laughs> I'm here for you. Continue the good work. We must move on. Praise the Lord. We must move on. We're going to hear a song now, after which I'll come back up and give you what the Lord has given me. Amen? All right.
Seems I hear your voice calling, it's all right A rainy night in Georgia A rainy night in Georgia It seems like it's raining all over the world I feel like it's raining all over the world Neon signs are flashing Taxi cabs and buses passing through the night A distant morning of a train Seems to play a sad refrain to the night Such a rainy night in Georgia Lord, I believe it's raining all over the world I feel like it's raining all over the world How many times I wondered still comes out the same No matter how you look at it or think of it It's life And you just got to play the game Place in a boxcar, so I take my guitar to pass some time. Late at night, when it's hard to rest, I hold your picture to my chest, and I feel fine. But it's a rainy night in Georgia. Feel it's raining all over the world. Kinda lonely now, and it's raining all over the world. Oh, have you ever been lonely, people? And you feel that it was raining all over this man's world. You're talking about raining, 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 raining over. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And my name is Pastor Kenneth Sherrill. I pastor the Greater New Zion Baptist Church uh, here in Oklahoma City, just right across the street. And I'm honored today to be able to come over here and say some words uh, to this family and to these friends who are here today. Amen. Um, funerals are learning experiences. You learn a lot when you go to a funeral. Amen. So uh, there is a story in the Bible that I would like to address to you today from St. Matthew chapter 14. Very familiar story. I know if you've been in church, you have heard this story. Uh, so um, let me just read a few verses uh, and then we'll get right into it. Amen. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, beginning with the 22nd verse. It says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, 
and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Amen. I want to talk to you today about how to make it in the storms of life. How to make it in the storms of life. At my church, we are involved uh, in a national convention. And every now and then, we get to go uh, to different cities in the nation. And this particular uh, convention was held in Mobile, Alabama. I had never been to Mobile, Alabama, and I was kind of excited to go. Uh, and so we rented a SUV, and about five of us got in there, and we drove about 14 hours to Mobile, Alabama. And when we got there, we were right there on Interstate 10, and we was in a high-rise hotel. And in my room, brother, we had a, a window view of the bay of Mobile, Alabama. I was excited because I wanted to see the water. I wanted to see the bay. I, I wanted to see some ships. Amen, y'all. And in, my, and in our room, there was a big window where we saw all of these ships go sailing by. Amen. I, I mean, I tell you, I got really amazed by it. I even pulled up a chair and just looked at the window and saw all of these ocean liners, these, these big ships go sailing by. And as the convention went on, we went and we heard some good preaching. We heard some good teaching. And then it came time for us to get ready to go. This particular convention was held in January, which y'all know that's a winter month. Amen. And so we was trying to decide who was going to drive because we were watching the weather report, trying to see what kind of weather it was going to be like, amen, on our way home. And of course, I drew the short straw. And so I started driving. And I told all those five people, two men and three women, that we were going to be on I-10 by 10. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Y'all come on and loosen up a little bit. And so we got in the car and we started, and we started going uh, 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 westbound on Interstate 10, and we, we were traveling, and I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you, I was probably speeding. Any of y'all done that before? You know, they got, a, they got a posted speed limit, but you know, you kind of went over it a little bit. And the reason why I come I was speeding is because based on the weather report, I started noticing that the clouds started turning a charcoal gray. And so we started picking up the speed because what I was really trying to do was outrun the storm. And I'm here to tell you today, uh, I don't care who you are or what you drive or where you are. You need to know that you cannot outrun a storm. Storms are inevitable. They're going to come when we least expect them. Amen. And so we were traveling westbound toward Lafayette, Louisiana, and we turned up on Highway 78 going toward uh, Alexandra, Louisiana, on our way toward Shreveport, Louisiana. We hit Interstate 20. Amen. And as we were going northbound, brothers, the rain came. It was a storm and night in Georgia. Amen, y'all. And as the rain was coming down, the temperature dropped. And it started snowing and sleeting. And I started noticing some cars had slid off the road, but yet here we are still rolling along. Amen, somebody. And as, and as we started going westbound more on Interstate 20 toward Dallas, Texas, we hit Denton, Texas, and started going northbound on Interstate 35 North. And as we got closer to the Red River, we started seeing the breaking of the clouds. We started seeing the sun coming out. And it let us know that everything is going to be all right. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I want the family to know that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. How many in here know that God is a miracle worker? 
Do I got a witness in here? He is a miracle worker. And, 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 and the reason why I come, uh, this story is so significant is because Jesus was, 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 was at, a, at a banquet out in the field. And the lesson said that he fed 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. Amen. And, 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 and if you count the women and the children, you're looking at about maybe 15 to 20,000 people with two fish and five loaves of bread. Y'all know the story. Amen. And, and what, I like about, what I like about Jesus and God, what I like about them is the fact that <clears throat> he, 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 he lets you know uh, that he can work a miracle. Because you had to know that that was a miracle. Amen. It was a miracle, and what I like about Jesus, I think the lesson goes on to say that it was 12 baskets of fragments left over. Amen, which means that they had them to go boxes. Y'all know how we do on Thanksgiving. We prepare more food and we have enough space in the refrigerator, and folks is taking all this food home. That's what he did, he, he, he blessed them. And after the, after the supper, he told his disciples to go get on the boat. Go get on this ship. Amen. And, and I want you to, uh, and then after they got, he convinced them because they were contrary. They didn't really want to get on the boat. I didn't really understand that at first because I know these disciples were uh, professional fishermen. They didn't have no problem getting on the water, but they didn't want to get on the boat for some reason. And as, they, as he had convinced them to get on the boat, he went back up into the mountains to pray. And so they got on the boat, amen. And I want you to see the boat, my first point. I want you to see the boat as the church, amen. If you're going to make it, if we're going to make it to the other side, the, you got to get on board. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. You, you, can't, you, you, got to, you got to get on board the, the boat. And I want you to see the boat as the church. See, church is not just for praise and worship. And don't get me wrong, I go there to praise and I go there to worship. But there's some more reasons why you ought to go to church. One of the main reasons why you ought to go to church is because you're going there to be instructed. Instructed to do what? To love your enemies. To love family members. To love one another when they mistreat you. Hello, y'all. You go there to learn how to pray and give God praise. You go there to be instructed. Amen. Amen. And I want you to know that these disciples was in the will of God. They, they did what Jesus told them to do. They got on board, but what I'm here to tell you today, just because you get in church, just because you get on board, just because you go and pay your tithes and pray, does not mean that there's gonna be a storm that's gonna come in your life. Somebody should have said something. Yeah, yeah, don't just because you're in church don't mean you ain't gonna run into a storm. Amen. And you know how storms are. Sometimes storm brings hail. Somebody ought to say something. And if you've ever been in a hail storm, when the hail hits you, it don't feel too good. Amen anyhow. Yeah. And so this particular body of water had a reputation. One of the main reasons why I come, they did not want to get on this boat because this body of water, which was the Sea of Galilee, had a reputation that at any moment, a storm could come. And sure enough, a storm came. And the lesson says it was a boisterous storm. The wind was contrary. The boat was going one way, sideways, up and down, and you know you probably would have got seasick if you'd have been on board. I want you to know this was not a ocean liner. This was not a cruise ship. This was an old boat like a sailboat that depended on the wind to push it across the sea. And water was getting in the boat. They throwing water off the boat. And water was getting in the boat. Amen, somebody. 
And the lesson said it was about the fourth watch of the night. They saw a figure come walking on the water. They got afraid because they thought it was a spirit or a ghost. Back in the country, we used to call them Hanks. Anybody been there? Yeah. <laughs> this Hank was walking across the, the sea. And we know it to be Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to them, fear not, it is I, be not afraid. And there's always one person in the family. I don't know who that is in your family. But in, 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 in this situation, it was Peter. And Peter said, if it's you, Jesus, bid me to come out on the water where you are. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but the Lord has said to you exactly what he said to Peter. Come. And while he was on the boat, all of his other brothers that was on the boat was trying to tell Peter, don't be no fool. If I was you, I would not get in that water. You know you can't swim. Hello. <laughs> you know you're going to drown. But Peter went on anyway. And he did the impossible. Y'all know, the ship was in the midst of the sea. It wasn't up against the shore in three feet of water. It was out in the deep. And there he was walking on the water. As long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he was able to do what philosophy says is impossible. Amen. And it was when he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. Amen, family. Today's message is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because even when you're in a funeral, if you didn't know it, you are in a storm. You are in the storms of life. And sometimes the storm will rage. We don't understand each other. We, we're bicking and biting at each other. And that's because you are in a storm. Amen. And when he got to Jesus, as he was sinking, one of the things that you learned when you got on board was to pray. And Peter started praying. And when he started praying, as he learned when he got in church, he only used three words, Lord, save me. If he would have prayed one of them prayers that we used to hear in church, he would have drowned. That's right, that should have been a laughing's point, you know. <laughs> Folk be praying all these long prayers trying to sound good. And Peter said, just Lord save me. And Jesus was right there and picked him up out of the water. And I'm here to tell you today, no matter what kind of storm you're in, Jesus is going to be right there to lift up your bowed down head and ease your troubling heart. And what I love about the story, and I'm almost through, is that as they were going back, they had to walk on some water again to get back to the boat. But when they got back to the boat, I noticed that those who was telling Peter not to go, when they came back, they got saved. See, if we are doing what God say do, we can help some of our own family members get on board and get saved. Can I get a witness, y'all? And so there they was, and they got back on board that old ship of Zion. And they didn't have to worry about anything because Jesus is the captain. They didn't have to worry about the water being troubled because Jesus was driving the ship. Are y'all going to help me close this? Jesus will take care of you no matter what kind of storm that's in your life. What kind of rage, what kind of hell that you may be going through, Jesus will fix it after a while. Amen. Do I got a witness in here Amen. that no Jesus will fix it after a while? No, no matter what trouble you're in, Jesus will fix it. Can I get a witness, y'all? There was a little girl in this last story I'm going to tell, and we're just going to call her name D. <laughs> D. I heard in one of the remarks that, that she liked to do hair. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so then this is this is definitely 
a paraphrase. This is really a, uh, a, a fiction story, but it's going to apply to the time. Amen? Amen. And so D, after school, when she would leave school, she would go to the cemetery. And when she would get to the cemetery, she would put her hands on the smooth granite tombstone. Y'all do know when you go to the tombstone and you read the tombstone, the little dash in the middle is what really counts. Amen, somebody. Y'all figure that out when you get home. Amen. Amen, anyhow. And there she was. She was checking out all the different little dashes in between the, the beginning and the end. And she was touching the smooth granite on the tombstone. Another day, she went to school, and when school was out, she left home economics where they were learning how to do hair. And she made her way to the cemetery. And one day, one of her friends asked her, why is it every day after school you go to the cemetery? And I heard Dee say just the other day, because it's on my way home. Can I get a witness right there? She was on her way home by going through the cemetery. One of these old days, we all have to go <laughs> to the cemetery. If we're going to make it to the other side and get over there where it's better over there than it is over here. Do I got a witness, y'all? And I saw little Dee, she walking toward the pearly gates. And her father, which art in heaven, was there beckoning her to come on over. And she started walking, and she got to the gate. <laughs> and she turned around, and she looked back over her life. And, and she started thinking about you all who are left here. And she started thinking about whether or not she want to keep on going. But she said to herself, over here <laughs> looks better than over there. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I'm going home over in Zion. I love you, but I'm going home. It's better. No more dying. No more crying. No more tears. No more pain. No more suffering. No more COVID-19. I'm in a better place because I don't have to deal no more with the troubles of this old world. I'm going on home to be with my father. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions, which means it was plenty of room. And so what she is saying to y'all today, because she is the reason why you are here, and what she is saying for y'all today is get on board the old ship of Zion and go get some instructions on how to deal when storms come into your life because she's telling you they're going to come and you need to be on board when they do amen? amen God bless you and God keep you is our prayer glory to his name God bless you God bless you bless your heart amen
like today, it's a rare occasion to be able to see young mothers like the ones that were around when I grew up, but they live on in memory to quite a few of us, and this song is dedicated to those who cherish that memory. Early one Sunday morning, breakfast was on the table there was no time to eat she said to me boy hurry to Sunday school filled with a lot of glory we learned the holy story she'll always have her dream Despite the things this troubled world can bring Oh, say, don't you know we love you, sweet Satan Place no one above you, sweet Satan Well, 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 living in the past Sometimes it seems so funny No money will turn your life around Sweeter than cotton candy Stronger than Papa's old brandy Always that needed smile Once in a while She would break down and cry Sometimes she'd be so happy Speaking with us and daddy standing the worst of times breaking the binds with just a simple song oh Sadie May don't you know still loving us all in your special way well 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 no one above it's sweet That song right there was my mama's favorite song. 
I don't know what the connection is, but I feel some kind of connection with this family. Amen. Amen. God is able.